Have you ever heard the term called character development? If you're familiar with various fandoms and nerd circles, especially in the anime and manga community, I'm sure you heard that when a character has good character development, it is how they change throughout the story, how they learn from their past experiences and become a different person as the story goes on. Well, what if I told you that that definition is just flat out wrong? I've been a part of many different fandoms and groups in my years, and I've noticed a running theme which is that they've always used the term character development wrong. But well, what do I mean that they're using it wrong? Well, many people seem to get the term character development mixed up with the term character arc. Although they are connected, a character having character development and a character going through a character arc are two very different things. And that's what I'm going to be explaining in this video. So my dear viewers, sit back, relax as I explain the difference between character development and character arcs. To start us off, let's go over the term character arc so this is what people usually mean when they say character development. A character arc is when a character, usually the main character, starts off as one type of person, but throughout the story they grow, they learn, and have new experiences, and at the end of their story, they are a completely different person. Character arcs can happen in many different ways to many different kinds of characters, whether they are heroes, villains, side characters, etc. Each one of these types of characters can change throughout the story. But the quintessential way for character arcs to play out is for them to follow the hero's journey. The hero's journey, created by Joseph Campbell, was a story structure that he noticed was repeated many times in different mythological stories in various cultures around the world. Now, the hero's journey consists of a hero living a boring, shitty life in a boring, shitty town, but they are then called to action by something changing up the status quo of where they are. That call to adventure leads them to have a journey into the world unknown to them. They discover new things about themselves in the world. They usually have to fight some evil force, whether that's an evil empire or force of nature or wherever it's just fucking up someone else's day. In fighting this evil force is when they learn who they truly are and they self-actualize after defeating this evil force. After this, they usually go back home, a changed person from all their experiences, and brings back treasure to redistribute back to the people of their town. This story structure has literally been done thousands of times, but it's essentially the basis of many very old mythological tales told by various cultures that affect the pop culture of that culture. So can you really blame them? Don't fix what ain't broke, you know? Examples of the hero's journey in media is stuff like Star Wars, which is in my humble opinion the best version of the hero's journey ever. But that's just me. Also I mean the original trilogy of Star Wars films, not the other ones. So yeah. Anyways, the original trilogy follows the formula pretty much to a T. Luke has a boring shitty life. He is called to action by Princess Leia's message. He goes with his mentor and Shady Lancer character to go on a huge adventure fighting against an evil empire. Through this journey, he becomes a self-actualized Jedi, saving his father from the dark side, destroying the evil empire in their crazy planet-destroying space ball, and boom, you got yourself a hero's journey character arc. The only thing that doesn't really happen is that he doesn't go back home. And I don't blame the guy, because fuck Tatooine. You're either getting attacked or robbed wherever you go. Shit, I wouldn't want to go back, that's for sure. Another example is Lord of the Rings. Many characters go through hero's journeys of their own in that series. Frodo starts off as a meek hobbit going through hell and back as an evil ring is corrupting him and the people around him every second that he's wearing it. Yeah, Frodo has a much darker character arc than a lot of other hero's journey characters. At least he went back to the Shire. Eventually. It's nicer than Tatooine, I'll say that much. Aragorn starts off as a brooding rogue figure to taking his rightful place as King of Gondor after fighting an evil empire led by an evil eye. He has a much more of a straightforward Hero's Journey character arc than Frodo. Many, many different characters have gone through Hero's Journeys in many different types of media. Like I've said, it's literally been done thousands of times. From Turf Potter, to The Matrix, to fucking Naruto, the Hero's Journey is a very important type of character arc to know. Alright, here are a bunch of examples of characters that go through various kinds of character arcs and various different kinds of media, so you guys can get a better understanding of what character arcs can be. Michael Corleone from The Godfather has a very interesting character arc because he does change, but the question is, does he change for the better? Michael starts off as a well-meaning war veteran whose family just so happens to be one of the most powerful mafia families in the country. Michael at first wants nothing to do with the gangster lifestyle, but as tensions rise with the other mafia families and with attempts on his father's life, he is forced to partake in what his family does. By the end of it, Michael has changed from the upstanding ward veteran to a cold, detached mafia boss who is willing to kill anybody that gets in his way. Shit, he even says so himself. 
don't feel I have to wipe everybody out, Tom. Just my enemies. That's all. Michael is an example of a corruption character arc, where a character starts off as a good person but ends up evil after going through many different trials and tribulations. Very common for lots of villains, main or otherwise. In contrast to that, let's talk about Zuko from Avatar The Last Airbender. Zuko has one of the most critically acclaimed character arcs. It's easily one of the most well-written and compelling arcs I've ever seen a character take. Because Zuko starts off as our main antagonist. His whole goal is to capture our main protagonist, Aang, and he has done some pretty vile things in pursuit of that goal. But as the story goes along, we see why Zuko is the way that he is. As he tries to figure out who he actually is, he works through his problems and helps Aang take out the main villain, Fire Lord Ozai. What I love so much about Zuko's arc is that it is messy, and he makes a ton of mistakes into getting how he is by the end of the story. Zuko is an asshole the vast majority of the show, but as he learns to not be an asshole, we as the audience get emotionally attached to his journey. So as he makes mistakes, we're like, what the fuck dude, we thought you were past this. But this also leads to one of the best moments in the show, which I'm going to spoil right now, so spoiler warning for Avatar The Last Airbender. The show is over 15 years old, why the fuck haven't you watched it yet? In the last episode of season 2, Zuko throughout the entire season is changing due to experiences of being a refugee and a wanted man. This all culminates in the last episode where Zuko has a choice to make. Fight with his sister Azula to capture Aang like he always wanted, or fight with Aang against Azula and finally transition over to being good. And even though Zuko has been going in the right direction for months, learning that he can decide his own destiny, he still tries to capture Aang in that moment. What makes this choice so incredibly well written is that even though he has changed for the better, there is still a part of him in that moment that was like, I can still do it. I know I shouldn't, but maybe I should. The desperation in his face speaks volumes about how he felt at that moment. This is just one moment out of many that makes Zuko's character arc so incredible. There's a reason why Zuko became such a popular character in that show, you know, other than crazy fangirls. Yu Zutara shippers are weird. Katang all day, baby. Guts from Berserk goes through many different changes throughout the story. He starts off the Golden Age arc very standoffish and angry. And for good reason because holy fuck Gus has a really shitty life. To becoming more open and more loving with the Band of the Hawk. But after the Band of the Hawk dies because fuck Griffith, Gus once again becomes cold and all he can think about is revenge. But as more people come into his life, Gus learns to let go of his hatred so he can protect his newfound family. Miyamoto Musashi from Vagabond starts off as a very bloodthirsty fighter to by the end becoming a samurai philosopher living to better himself every day. I really want to say more about Musashi, but maybe I will in a future video, who knows? You better stay tuned for that. Hit that subscribe button. Since I recently replayed this game, I use it as an example. Dante from Devil May Cry 3 in particular. He starts off as a very aloof and wacky guy that loves pizza. He really doesn't care about the plot of the game too much, but as the story progresses and through his interactions with Lady, he learns that family is important is that he should actually give a shit about what's happening around him. I mean, yeah, Dante, people are dying all around you because a huge tower is jutting out of the ground. You should probably do something about it, right? For another movie example, there's Kikuchio from Seven Samurai, played by the incredible Toshio Mifune. Kikuchio starts off as a nameless bum who pretends to be a samurai because he has a certificate. It turns out the certificate isn't his, obviously. It also turns out that he was a peasant farmer whose village was exploited and abused by samurai. Kikuchio may have started out as a ruffian looking to prove himself to the other samurai in the group, but by the end of the film, he is a brave hero who sees the pain of the village is going through and decides to help, even though he wouldn't get anything in return. Alright, I'm sure you heard me ramble about character arcs enough, let's move on to what is character development. Character development is essentially just what we know about a character. It's all of the information about that character's personality, likes and dislikes, and goals that are shown off to the audience. Now just to get this out of the way, a character can have a character arc while being a fully developed character. Most of the greatest written characters in fiction are like that. But there are also characters that don't have much of a character arc, but are still fully developed characters. An example that I love to use to explain this are the main characters from One Piece. One Piece has a ton of fucking characters some of which go through character arcs like Kobe or Jinbei, but our main characters, the Straw Hats, or more specifically Luffy, doesn't go through much of a character arc at all. 
He learns new things about the world and the people in it, yes. But Luffy as a character doesn't really change much. He's a simple character with a simple goal. To find the One Piece and become king of the pirates. But even though he doesn't change much, he is an incredibly well developed character. We learn so much about Luffy throughout the story of One Piece that it really makes up for his lack of change. We know his goals, his likes and dislikes, his personal philosophy. You really get to see how Luffy sees the world and the people in it as the story goes on. We essentially know why Luffy does what he does and how he got to those conclusions. Come on, I mean we're talking about Oda here. He spares no expense when it comes to developing his story. Another popular example of how character development can be used is with superhero stories. The reason for this is because most superheroes already have their major character arc in their origin story of how they became a superhero. Batman or Superman don't really go through much of an arc after they become Batman and Superman. The only time you really see that stuff is with prequel stories or year one stories where they're really trying to figure out how to do this whole superhero thing. Even though these superheroes don't really have major character arcs, they are incredibly well developed. Spider-Man's development is one of the core reasons why a lot of people like Spider-Man. He's a broke high school or college student depending on the story who constantly has to manage being a superhero while being a loving boyfriend and also paying rent. With the way these stories are told, there are even more things that we know about Peter Parker and how he deals with his double life as Spider-Man. Batman is a very similar case, but I feel like it's more focused around the development of Batman and not of Bruce Wayne. Nobody really gives a shit about the life of Bruce Wayne. It's all about Batman. We really get in deep with the moral and philosophical reasonings behind how he acts as Batman and how he sees himself as Batman. Even though Batman is vengeance, as he usually says, he really does try to help the villains that he fights because most of them are just victims like him. Well, in Batman the Animated Series we see this. A lot of the comic book stories is just him being the shit out of villains like a cop who's seeing black people just being happy. What we know about Batman and how that information is conveyed to the audience is one of the main reasons why Batman is such a popular character. Also, he's a brooding edgelord that lives in a cave. There are tons of examples of characters that are very well developed even if they don't change much in various pieces of media. Master Chief from the Halo series is a great example because of how subtle he shares the information about him to the audience. He may be an augmented super soldier made to kill entire armies of aliens and also to contain and start revolutions against the space military that he's a part of. But don't worry about that, it's fine, it's fine. But he also has a heart and he truly does care for the people he has to protect and his fellow soldiers. You mainly see this side of him in his moments with Cortana, the military AI that's literally been with him since the beginning of his career. Ito Ogami from Lone Wolf and Cub is a fantastic example of character development being showcased throughout a story. Ito doesn't change much in Lone Wolf and Cub. He does learn things but there's not much of a character arc. But his core character and the development on top of that is what makes Ito so compelling. Ito is an assassin that travels with his son Daigoro as he gains enough money and evidence to get revenge on the Yagyu family that killed his wife. Each story is about Ito getting an assassination job and how Ito goes about it. How he approaches these assassinations really showcases how Ito is as a person. He is cunning, intelligent, and willing to do almost anything to get the job done. But Ito's philosophy about being a swordsman and abandoning honor so he can walk the path of the Meifumato is also shown to the audience as well, making Ito even more interesting. He is so much more than a stoic assassin. He is a kind man and a loving father. Another example that I really like to use is the character of Ginko from Ushishi. First of all, if you haven't seen this anime, what's wrong with you? Go do that. And secondly, I love Ginko. He is such a great character. In the story of Mushishi, there are these spirit beings called Mushi that are a part of the fabric of the world that they live in. Mushishi are people that can see and interact with these spirits. The story of this show is just Ginko traveling around Japan, finding people who are affected by Mushishi in some way or form and try to help them with varying results. The reason why Ginko works so well in this story is because while he is helping people, we learn more about him through his interactions with the people affected, his interactions with the Mushi themselves, and his general reactions to the Mushi whether they be positive, negative, or in between. His personality really shines through in each episode and that is a sign of great development. Alright everybody, that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for staying all the way to the end. Um, this video was supposed to come out uh, about a month or so ago, but a lot of crazy stuff kind of happened in between all that stuff, so I kind of got pushed back a little bit. But I'm glad the video came out now, and I'm glad that, you know, all is well today. Well, kind of. Hopefully you guys uh, learned something new from this video. You know, hopefully I gave a lot of good examples. I feel like I did. I feel like I did a pretty good job to say so myself. 
don't forget to like the video and subscribe to this channel. Um, I have a lot more videos coming a lot quicker than this one will. Um, yeah, a lot faster, hopefully. We keep on schedule. <laughs> also, uh, something that I forgot to say in the last video, um, I have a Twitter, I guess. Um, I haven't really been posting much on it recently, but I'm going to um, in this but I'm going to be posting a lot more stuff this month and in the next couple of months, all right? So feel free to follow. Um, I have a link in the I have a link in the description below if I can talk correctly. I have a link in the description below. So yeah, go follow the Twitter. Hopefully it should be a good time. See you next time for something completely different. Peace.